This presentation is on how to uh, implant an LV lead in, in a patient with CS atresia. First of all, how do you know you have CS atresia? Well, that's usually because you've looked around for the CS using contrast and sorted methods and you just can't find anything or you see some little hair-like branches. Uh, if you do have CS atresia, then the blood return from the coronary venous system needs to go somewhere to get back into the venous system. So there is often a persistent vein of Marshall through which the CS can be accessed in the LV lead implanted. Uh, CRT, CT and MRI imaging um, is usually not very helpful uh, in figuring this out. If he has complete CS atresia, uh, then all the blood uh, from the coronary arteries that goes to the venous system has to get back uh, to the venous system some way and what it typically does is go back up the vein of Marshall uh, into the subclavian and then back into the right atrium. If you know this then you can look for uh, the vein of Marshall, the persistent vein of Marshall when you can't find the coronary sinus as is illustrated uh, in this patient, where you can see uh, there's a relatively large persistent vein of Marshall and complete CS atresia. And in this case, it was possible to implant the lead down the persistent vein of Marshall. Just another example of a similar case where uh, it was not possible to find the CS uh, using contrast. And, and again, you can see uh, that we were able to find a large vein of Marshall and implant down the vein of Marshall. You note that there's complete CS atresia and no blood return into the right atrium, uh, and importantly, also not into the left atrium. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. If you have incomplete CS atresia, that is, some of the blood return uh, goes from the coronary sinus back into the right atrium, then the, the amount of blood return that goes back to the vein of Marshall is going to be less and the size of the vein of Marshall uh, will be smaller. As is il illustrated in this case, um, where we're not able to find the CS, and you'll notice this time the vein of Marshall is smaller, uh, and when we uh, inject down near the os of the CS, you can see that there is blood return back into the right atrium, but just no way to get from the right atrium uh, into the, into the coronary sinus or vice versa. And so we're able to implant going down the vein of Marshall. Um, as more blood return goes to the right atrium, the size of the vein of Marshall gets even smaller. And this patient uh, had had two previous uh, attempts at LV lead placement, uh, both of which were followed by epicardial leads, both of which uh, both sets of epicardial leads subsequently failed. So this is sort of a last resort. And so I was looking very hard for the persistent vein of Marshall. Um, and I, I couldn't find it, but I, using the uh, standard merit vein selector, which is what I usually use, uh, and I had a switch to, you can see that there's something there. Um, so I had a switch to an AL2 to finally uh, engage the branch, so five French uh, diagnostic AL2, but just being fairly certain that there had to be something here to look for, and then finding it, um, we're able to eventually locate the vein of Marshall, and you can see the vein of Marshall enters the body of the CS right by Busen's valve, uh, so technically we're entering the CS um, just, to, just below the Busen's valve, and Everything above that, up in here, is the great cardiac vein. Um, in some cases, you can actually use the vein of Marshall uh, to cannulate the CS. Uh, if a fair amount of blood return is, is present, as in this case, um, couldn't find the CS a couple of times previous attempts, very small vein of Marshall. Um, but you'll notice that there's a relatively large opening uh, of the coronary sinus 
into the right atrium, it was just very difficult to locate it. But we, so we sent a wire down the vein of Marshall into the right atrium, got a second access, and then brought the, um, were able to snare the wire and then use that wire to pull ourselves into the coronary sinus. Now you'll note here that we're really not in the, the uh, CS proper, so we had to uh, put a wire up, stabilize, and then s switch from uh, from the the vein of Marshall here over into the body of the CS. And so again, this area right here, the vein of Marshall, this is actually the great cardiac vein. Below that is the true CS, and then the valve of the Bucin's valve uh, is right in here. So we're able to get in uh, and place an LV lead. Um, another variant on this is the unroofed coronary sinus. And in this situation, the blood return uh, can enter the left atrium directly so that the CS is unroofed and thus there is access from the CS directly into the left atrium. So the size of the vein of Marshall is going to be smaller uh, because some of the blood, because a lot of the blood flow can actually go in the left atrium and doesn't need to go up the vein of Marshall. Um, and this is a patient that it took me several attempts to figure out. Um, and you can see here's actually, we're coming from the right side and you can actually see the middle cardiac vein and all this business in here. Um, but eventually we were able to determine after sending her for an epicardial lead, which did not have any benefit because it was located um, in not a good position, um, we were able to locate a very small vein of Marshall. But in this case, when we went down the vein of Marshall and, and injected, we realized that we are in the left atrium. So you can see this is the roof of the left atrium. Uh, and the, the reason that this is important, even though we're going to implant down the vein of Marshall, uh, that the blood return from the coronary sinus a significant percentage of it is going to go directly into the left atrium, bypassing the lungs, um, and thus has the potential for any thrombus formation to go directly uh, into the arterial system. So if you do implant in a patient who has uh, a um, unroofed CS, you have to anticoagulate them uh, subsequently because they will have a tendency for thromboembolic complications. So we implanted down the vein of Marshall. So in conclusion, if you can't locate the CS os or you can only find an atretic branch vein, you may be dealing with CS atresia. If there is CS atresia, there is often a persistent vein of Marshall where the blood from the CS drains uh, into the left subclavian near the sternoclavicular junction. You can use the vein of Marshall uh, and a vein selector uh, to look for that and then implant uh, down the vein of Marshall or to get access into the coronary sinus uh, by uh, advancing a wire into the right atrium. The size of the persistent vein of Marshall depends on the percent of venous return uh, that is going uh, up the vein of Marshall. So the vein of Marshall will be smaller if you only have a partial CS atresia and the vein of Marshall will be smaller if you have an unroofed CS, again, because the blood uh, returns uh, directly into the left atrium and thus doesn't need to go up the vein of Marshall.